So your plan to train and keep more staff in the NHS. You've already done interviews on it, so I don't want to spend too long uh, dwelling on the details. But there's one question that I haven't really seen anyone ask you. £2.4 billion over five years. Where's that money coming from? Well, it's through uh, cross-government, through the Treasury. That was part of the discussions we had. And it signalled the Prime Minister and the Chancellor's personal support what, what for does, this. What does that mean, then? Is, is it more money to your department, or are you going to have to find it from NHS existing budgets, or is it borrowing? What, where's it coming from? So this is additional money. It will be announced, as a former Chief Secretary, it will be announced in the usual way uh, through fiscal events. Uh, it ramps up because, obviously, one of the features of the workforce plan, and it is the biggest ever expansion in workforce training in the NHS. It's a hugely historic moment as we celebrate the 75th anniversary of the NHS, the fantastic achievements of the NHS. It's a major commitment from the government and it reflects the, the Prime Minister's personal commitment to the NHS, coming from an NHS family, both his parents worked in the NHS and the Chancellor has long okay. called for a long-term workforce plan. So it reflects their support, it's 2.4 billion of additional funding so, uh, that will be announced by the Chancellor in the usual way at the next fiscal event. So but it's additional funding to the department. So I haven't heard any you know, tax rises or spending cuts, so I'm assuming this sounds like it might be extra borrowing. 100% of GDP, that's the current level of debt. Interest rates rising, so the cost of service in government debt is going up. Is that really responsible? Well, it scales up, Sophie. So first year, obviously, you only have one year of people being trained in the second year, that doubles as those billion. medical... If Labour, if Labour announced a policy of 2.4 billion without saying how that money was coming from, you would be after them like a rocket. It scales up. You've got to see that in terms of the way the doubling of medical undergraduates works is obviously that is cumulative because the second year got double the number, the third year triple. So that scales up over time. But also it helps in terms of the cost of agency, the cost of bank uh, and other support. So it's important to our retention, in the NHS, if we have uh, more NHS staff staying, that is a cost-effective approach. So what the plan is about is training more, yes, but also how do we have better retention and also how do we deliver that training in more efficient ways through reform. So there's three elements to the plan, not just the increase in numbers, but also the work on training and reform. The one thing that could also help the NHS recruit and retain staff is better pay. Um, the independent pay review bodies will soon publish their recommendations about the uplift that mm. health workers mm. should get. Will you stick by what they recommend? Well, we'll take those decisions on a, a cross-government basis. I'm very pleased we've now reached agreement with the largest group within the NHS, <coughs> excuse me, which is the Agenda for Change uh, workforce. That's 1.3 million people within the NHS where the government and the NHS Staff Council has reached agreement. That means those staff will get uh, the pay uplifts in their uh, pay packets this month. So that shows the progress that we are making. In terms of the wider PRB, that is something that is discussed cross-government. It's not just an issue within health. It also affects, for example, teachers and the education unions, affects other departments in government. So we'll have those discussions on a cross-government basis. But it's hugely positive that we have reached agreement with the largest of the health bodies, the 1.3 million covered by Agenda for Change. It's weird that you won't say that you'll stick to the pay review recommendations, because this is what you said about them last year, um, when you're talking about pay there, and you tweeted to say, we have an independent pay review body, which the union's campaign to set up, and we will continue to defer to that process to ensure decisions balance the needs of staff and the wider economy. So you'll defer to the pay review body when you like what they say, but you reserve the right to ignore them when you don't. I think when I was on the show previously, you criticised me for adhering to the full pay review body because there was a, a pressure to go further. There was questions in terms of, because of the change in inflation, you were saying we shouldn't just stick to the full pay review body, we should actually go further. And indeed, the government did. I'm putting the different in, so, views forward, so, as you would expect me to do. My, my, course, I'm just trying to work out why your position, you're the health secretary, right? You're the one who has actually influence. I'm just a lowly TV reporter. I've got no say over uh, what pay all these people get. <clears throat> why do you say that you should defer to the pay review process when you like what they say and not when you don't. Well, the point we discussed when this was raised last time, and you bring the quote up from last time, which is why I'm mm -hmm. making the point, was well, we should also tweet, look at the point. wider economic circumstance. And that was the point that you were raising with me the last time, sure. Sophie. And that's what and you say did. here. And you we say did. you should balance the needs of staff and the wider economy. Now you're saying, actually, we just need to look at the wider economy, not the needs of staff. No, no, no. That's we, what the pay we, review body does. They, we they need look to do, at that we stuff, We need right? to do both, and that's exactly what we have done with the Agenda for Change, which is why not only did we uh, apply the full pay 
ABV body recommendations, we actually went further in terms of a lump sum for staff because we hugely recognise the pressure that NHS staff have been under from the pandemic and older population, advances in medicine, enabling more to be done. Uh, we both adopted the full pay review body, but we actually went further last time. Of course, we need to look at the wider pressures in terms of inflation, our commitment to halving inflation, growing the economy, reducing debt, as well as cutting waiting times and stopping the boat. So we need to look at these things in the round. That's what we did last time, which is why we made adjustments. Of course, we will take a similar approach this time. They're expected to recommend a 6% rise for NHS staff. Would that be acceptable to you? Well, as I say, these will be discussions that I have on behalf of uh, the health workforce with the Prime Minister, the Chancellor, that the Education Secretary will have on behalf of teachers and other ministers will have uh, across government. So we will have those and we'll make announcements in due course. Um, you were earlier in the interview saying it's great that you have reached agreement with some uh, people who work for the NHS, um, but of course junior doctors is mm. outstanding. Uh, they're planning their longest ever strike later this month, Thursday the 13th to Tuesday the 18th of July. Will that put lives at risk? Well, it's hugely concerning. Uh, I'm hugely grateful to those within the NHS who have stepped up when we've had past junior doctor strikes, who, who come in, often change their holiday plans to provide uh, cover. Uh, the junior doctors are continuing to demand a 35% pay rise. I, I don't think that is affordable in the context of the inflation and the other Is pressures. that true? They say that they want to get around the table and actually thrash something out, but you don't want to talk to them, do you? Well, we have, and we had three weeks of talks. Not only that, they asked to bring a, an intermediary and a, a very senior uh, respected NHS leader, Cathy McLean, who had played a pivotal role in a previous dispute between uh, SAS doctors uh, and the department. The department agreed to bring it in uh, that intermediary, but notwithstanding uh, Cathy's uh, excellent work, the discussions that we had with the junior doctors to date, they have refused to move from a 35% demand. Where they talk of an additional year using 2024-25, actually they demand a 49% increase because of that additional year. So I don't think that in the context of the wider economy, the need to get inflation down, that is a fair demand. Of course, both sides need to move. We are willing to do so in government. We have accepted the use of the intermediary that the BMA Why don't you get for, around the table with them now? Been, it seems it's well, a bit arrogant, doesn't it, if you won't even talk to them now? Well, we've been consistent, not just in health, but in all departments, uh, that if people uh, suspend the strikes, then we can get round the table, have talks. In the moment, the junior doctors have walked away from the talks. We were in the middle of discussions with them. There were a range of other factors that they have raised with me in terms of uh, annual leave that is often cancelled at short notice, rotors that have changed, some of the wellbeing issues around uh, circumstances in hospitals. So we're happy to discuss those. We were in the middle of discussing some of those why making progress on our longest waits. That's what the plan uh, committed to. We virtually eliminated the two-year waits last summer. We committed to uh, reducing the 18-month waits. We cleared over 90% of those. And if you contrast our performance with Labour run uh, the NHS in Wales, we're making much more progress. So we've got a population 18 times the size of the, the NHS of... in Wales. If you just let me finish, the population in England is 18 times the size of that in Wales. We virtually eliminated our two year waits in the summer. We got our 18 month waits to down below 12,000, yet in Wales that was 30,000 for two year waits and around 70,000 for 18 month wait. So we're making much more progress than we see in Labour and Wales. And yet, Keir Starmer says that's the blueprint for a Labour government. If you forgive me for coming in, yeah. um, thank you very much. Um, the number of people waiting for routine treatment has risen from 7.2 million to 7.4 million. I mean, most people would say that does not look like progress. Most people who are experiencing what's going on in the NHS would not say that looks like progress. If you look at the plan that was set out in 2022 by NHS England, it always anticipated that the bounce back from the pandemic would mean that in terms of the overall size of the list, it may continue to grow. In so fact, that did, plan which is talked it was about, cut that plan talked about it coming down in March of next year. Now, what we're doing is fast tracking things like our diagnostic centres. We've got 108 open. Uh, now we're going to have 160 open shortly. That's delivered 4 million additional tests and scans. We've got more treatment being, capacity being rolled out, 43 new and expanded surgical hubs. So we're boosting our treatment. That takes time to come on stream. We're making progress. We're cutting the longest wait okay. and we're fast-tracking the capacity to bring the overall size of the waiting list down. I just want to be honest. 
you know, looking at the five pledges that Rishi Sunak made that he said he wanted to be judged on, and it seems like you guys are on pretty shaky ground. You know, halve inflation, stop the boats, cut debt. When the Prime Minister announced them six months ago, he said simply, no tricks, no ambiguity, we're either delivering for you or we're not. Mm. What happens if you're not? Well, the Prime Minister was clear. These were tough targets that he set himself, and rightly so. Well, and most people take... thought they were easy, that they were low bars. Well, you can now see that there were tough targets that were set, and it was right that we did so. And I have to take waiting lists. The plan is working. We cleared the longest waits, the two-year waits the last summer. The plan is working on waiting we lists. Cleared, we cleared the longest waits. Well, what the plan set out was the target the longest waits. We cleared the two-year waits last summer. We cleared over 90% of the 18-month waits. We're now focused on the 65 Week waits, that's the next element of the plan, and we're massively accelerating the rollout of our diagnostic centres, our through surgical the, hubs, through in the order five to bring pledges, the overall quantum down. Three of the five pledges around the economy, but debt is 100% of GDP. The economy grew by 0.2% in April. Inflation's far higher than expected. You know, what happens when the guy who says he's the one to fix the economy doesn't actually fix the economy? Well, you see that the because we've had two one in 100 year events, of course there's been huge pressures and these are not alone to the economy in England. There are we specific see them, issues uh, for our economy. You will acknowledge world. that. Uh, so you know, you're we, a smart well, guy, you know that. Well, we're growing the economy. We recognise the OECD, recognised uh, that recently, the progress that is being made. But of course we've had two one in 100 year events. Those have had an impact. Okay. But if you look at the progress we're making in health, the rolling out of national lung cancer screening this okay. week, the, and now, I guess, you know, the question was what happens if the guy who says he fixes the economy doesn't fix the economy? And I think, I think really we know people will start turning away from the Conservative Party. A poll in the Sunday Telegraph by opinion finds you're on course for the biggest by-election defeat in British history in mid-Bedfordshire, with Nadine Dorsey's seat. And before you say it's just one poll, I think we can have a look at our Sky News poll tracker, which shows, unsurprisingly perhaps, you know, the Conservatives are still well behind Labour, not much sign of that improving at all. At what point do you start to panic? Well, we recognise it's tough because we've had a pandemic, we've had uh, a war in Europe that's had a big impact in terms of inflation in cost of living. But look at what Labour uh, is coming for. We're nothing in terms of helping on inflation. They want to add £28 billion, uh, to our debt. That will make the problem worse. If you look at uh, stopping the small boats, there's no pro uh, proposal from Labour to do so. Absolutely silent on that. If you look at our biggest ever expansion of the workforce in the NHS this week, backed by £2.4 billion. Pounds. Labour has no proposals on reform in their equivalent plan. It was completely silent on the innovations that we're bringing forward. And what we're doing is getting on in innovating coming out of the pandemic. If I take the example of lung cancer in our most deprived communities. Previously, four in five patients were diagnosed late. We've turned that on its head. It's now through our pilots, three and four, that are diagnosed early. If you look at the investment we're making in research to get the latest innovations into the NHS, £96 million we announced on Tuesday for 93 different institutions. If you look at the work on okay. mental health, often that's been an area that's been neglected. Significant additional funds, £2.3 billion more this year than okay. four years ago. So a huge amount of innovation and work is going on, but we recognise there's much more to do. Just finally, rumours of a reshuffle after the by-elections uh, next month. And I just want to read you a quote in The Times, if I may. I think you might know which is coming. Uh, most of the Cabinet, The Times says, is expected to emerge unscathed, although there continues to be speculation about the futures of Steve Barclay, the House Secretary, and Therese Coffey, the Environment Secretary. Please well, join the conversation. It's always for the Prime Minister to, to pick Put your the, comments the and, and suggestions and, below in the uh, comments section. Three Prime Ministers and Thank you, can you see for the subscribing to this news say, channel. If I just take Week, you will be notified of any breaking news and new posts research, as you become part uh, and parcel of the TAO Media health, family. Uh, and the okay. plan, and that's Please like and share TAO oh. Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.